miss you so much. And maybe, maybe if you, if you open yourself up to it, there's a possibility. I don't think so, Quinn. Quill. Quill. I don't think so. Well, what I'm trying to say is... Peter, you know this is an open line, right? What? We're listening to everything you're saying. And it is painful. And you're just telling me now? We were hoping it would stop on its own. But I switched it over to private. What color button did you push? Blue, for the blue suit. Oh, no. Blue is the open line for everyone. Orange is for blue. What? Black is for orange. Yellow is for green. Green is for red. And red is for yellow. No, yellow is for yellow. Green is for red. Red is for green. I don't think so. Try it then. Hello! You were right. Hey, Palmers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Frank. And I'm Rob. All right. In this episode, we're going to be covering the movie that's out in the theaters, the movie that apparently has been number one for quite some time now since it came out about two weeks ago, or was it three weeks almost at this point? It's that like would be three, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 3, oh, Volume 3 <laughs> from 2023. So we are going to be covering this. It's going to be a spoiler full podcast. So keep that in mind, listeners. So if you haven't seen the movie, stop this now. Go back. Go out to the theater. Take your kids. Take your dog. Who cares? Watch it. Right now, this time of the year, drive-ins are open. Go to the drive-in. Spoiler (laughs) alert. Spoiler alert. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah. But we're covering that, so uh, like I said, it's all spoilers, so spoiler alert, like Rob said. So with that, uh, the synopsis for this particular title, if you have been sleeping in the gutter for a long time and don't really pay attention to the news or like these kind of movies, still reeling from the loss of Gamora, Peter Quill rallies his team to defend the universe and one of their own, a mission that could mean the end of the Guardians if not successful. So straight to the point, very simple, uh, nothing giving away within that particular synopsis. So, uh, so far, it is one of the top ranking movies that are out there. It held the number one spot since it came out when, what was it, uh, May 3rd or 4th? It was released on May 5th. May 5th. Okay. Yeah. So... Right now we're recording on May 23rd. So it's been out for quite some time and has made lots of money in comparison to what we covered last time, which was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which really (laughs) didn't make that much money. Hey, but that was still a good movie. It it was entertaining. It was entertaining. So far, this movie has made uh, $664.1 million. Domestically, probably. Yeah. So, so once they go into uh, overseas numbers, that's going to be a completely different thing altogether. So I see this as being a win for Marvel and a huge win for James Gunn, even though this is his last movie with Marvel now that he's uh, head content create uh, moderator for, uh, for DC. <laughs> but I'm sure that, you know, Kevin Feige will let him play in his world too at some point right. because there's oh, been, yeah. there's been speculations, rumors going around. I don't know, you've heard it on the internets, what they call that stuff on the wet world wide webisode. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> uh, that there's possibly a Marvel DC movie that's gonna be coming together, you know. Right. You, they they want to do a I, versus I doubt, movie. I doubt that's gonna happen. I doubt it myself, but uh, what? In well, we can 80s. say we doubt it, right? But there have but they, been comics with crossovers, correct? Yeah, yeah. but that's they could be like Teen Titans versus X Men, right? That's comics, but you got to remember Disney's very protective about their property. Yes, and correctly. the fact that they collaborated with Sony for Spider Man—that's a different story because Sony, I mean, uh, Spider Man is still part of the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. But to try to collaborate with a studio for a whole different universe. I just, I can't, 
I can't see that. I mean, these are two studios that right now they don't have their shit together. <laughs> you know, so. Well, yeah, one's <laughs> one it, it has a momentum that's been building for over what close to fifteen years now, right. almost fifteen years, with the inception of making Iron Man. Now, mind you, they've had other movies just before, like DC has, but in other iterations. But DC right now is flip flopping with their popularity. Yeah with whatever they got coming out and the only they're very coming, uneven uh, as far as the quality of the movies the quality of the movies right. have been subpar they had like maybe two or three movies that were like great and then the others just fell on the wayside but yeah. they also had um they had their anime which works great for them too so if you look right. at their animation Everybody loves those movies. I love those movies. That is the thing that makes no sense whatsoever, because how can you get it right so many times in animated movies, but yet get it so wrong every other time? Well, you got to remember that. So for an animation studio, they're not really going through that, that many, I would say, executives for that. Plus, every movie they come out with sometimes has nothing to do with the last one. Mm -hmm. Um, this, uh, you know, so the, the DCU is all about world building, which while Zack Snyder, I mean, I liked Man of Steel, but, um, you know, of course his next movie, uh, Batman versus Superman, that's, that leaves a lot of people, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, exactly. But you know, I like the Snyder cut of uh, justice league. So the thing is that he, he was trying to do that world building. The problem was they didn't have somebody that can say hey this is where it's all going and one uh, and two i would say they were trying to catch up to marvel when they should have just done their own thing and said listen right. marvel's yeah. so ahead of us let us just do our thing at our own pace let them have the you know their spotlight and then we'll have ours and it's great but they didn't do that they were trying to rush everything they let all the directors do whatever the hell they wanted and this is why, you know, the whole thing went to shit. So now yeah. hopefully with James Gunn running it, they'll yeah. be able to get it on track. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they will. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I, I love what he's done. I love what he's done for Guardians of the Galaxy. My problem with that is my problem with the DC part of it is that he said that he was going to do an entire reboot of everything. Yeah. But then he yeah. backpedaled. And said, well, no, 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 no. Suicide Squad is still going to be here. And then he said, oh, wait, wait. You know, the, uh, how you call it? Um, the Flash is still going to be here. So it's <laughs> like now he started nitpicking all the, you know, choosing all the little stuff that he wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. And the one who really got screwed, which is the main character of all of fucking <laughs> <Superman>. DC, <laughs> is Superman, Superman. <laughs> which is Henry Cavill, which right. a lot of people, you They're know, you ha- a lot of people are pissed. I was pissed because Honestly, look, I grew up with Christopher Reeve, but right. honestly, I like Henry Cavill's version of Superman much better. So right. I, for me, I think he was the best Superman. And, you know, they just, I don't know what he did to whoever in Warner Brothers <laughs> that they kept screwing him. <laughs> I mean, it was just <laughs> one thing after the other. And it was like, dude, what did you do? <laughs> You know, so that's an entirely different podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would love to one day run into him and I go, look, dude, 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 secretly, secretly. I won't I won't say anything. What did you do? <laughs> I want to find out. Here, I'll give you this video card for your computer because we know you're a gamer and you're a geek. So just tell us what you got. All right. Listen, I can no longer do that. So <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, to say the least. It, James Gunn's there. You got somebody who's going to be trying to work this out. Marvel, right. it's a possibility, but it's a lot of money. It's all legal. Right. So we won't know until the future. But like I said, it's all rumorville. So we got to take that with a grain of salt. But the fact is, is that he left us with, I think, rounding out his trilogy of movies. If you think about it, between Guardians 1, 2, and 3, they're all, right. I have no problems with them. You know, this yeah, one, I, I. I prefer this one over the st- the second one, so it's one, three, and two for me in my lineup and movies. That's how much I love them. Right. I I'll be very honest with you. Yeah, I, I think three for me would be the last one. Okay. Out of one and two, 
I think they're equal to, I mean, no, actually, you know what? One actually had the, I would say the distinction of being so unique. Mm. Yeah. Where first it's time. like, yeah, yeah. It, it was first time. And it was like, who the fuck are these characters? <laughs> I mean, exactly. Honestly, I was like, uh, I'm like, I heard of the guardians uh, of the galaxy, but who out there, what the hell is Kevin Feige thinking of bringing <laughs> these unknowns? And you know what? It worked. Well, it, it worked for worked. the sense that the, these were characters that was in the Marvel IP that they had access to and easy access to. Right. And they didn't have to deal with another company. Like Hulk is still stuck with Universal. Right. And there are other characters in other, like, from that were bought Spider-Man out. and, yeah. Spider-Man as well. So they couldn't go with the main heavy hitters. So... Since they want to go into space, what's the next best thing? Get the Guardians right. out. So yeah, and he worked well, it yeah, out. It was one, yeah, it was one of those things that those characters. No, but I'm just saying, like those characters were just kind of out of left. They, they were what we call like probably tertiary characters. Yeah, which is like if you're into cosmic comic books, sure you know about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, but to to make a major movie out of it and then become one of those movies that was so successful that it's on, t- you know, it's probably on top of everybody's list of favorite yeah. marvel movies that's right. what actually shocked me and you know what i'm one of those people <laughs> all right well with that we're gonna move right into uh our overall thoughts of the movie just in general so and then we'll move into our uh favorite moments within the movie that we liked so sure. frank what's your overall thought of this movie in general my overall thought is it's fantastic okay. i mean I was sitting there and I actually went in with kind of lower expectations. Cause you know, you're like, it's the third one. Are we going to be able to get lightning in a bottle a third time? Mm-hmm. I didn't think we could. And I really was like, Oh man, we're going to, somebody's going to die. So we're going to, they're going to kill off some character, like right at the beginning, probably and be like, that's it for that one. <laughs> but no, man, they made a very entertaining story that, kept you engaged and it was really great i enjoyed it from start to finish i loved everything they did and i they didn't really kill anybody so (laughs) just a lot of aliens you know rocket's dead for like a couple of minutes again we put the spoilers out there so don't don't feel bad when we say that spoiler full people (laughs) uh rob I hated this movie. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you watched it like four times. Bro. I watched it four times. And, like you know, like we were talking about before the podcast, you know, every time I watched it, I started liking it more and more and more. I like the development of the characters. I like where they, you know, how far they, they you know, they've, you know, come. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. I mean, the one thing I didn't like was the warlock uh you know adam warlock i don't think he was portrayed very well on that and i think that was the one weak part of the movie Mm -hmm. other than that i think everybody else's character was great especially for me like i was telling you guys i thought nebula was my favorite character out of this movie because you got to see her evolve from the freaking psychopath that she was (laughs) and how she wanted to kill everything and wanted to you know just wanted to like she didn't want to get along with anybody and stuff like that till the very end where this was her family, which is what she, I think she was longing for so yeah. much. And, and again, spoilers, when you see her crying, when she hears rocket's voice, right. And then you see her at the very end when she's dancing and she's laughing, which is something you never see her do. That to me was really, really cool. Also, yeah. same thing with Rocket. I thought Rocket was also awesome. Rocket was just this character that, while he's a cool CG character, you know, he was just an asshole and everybody just really didn't like him, but he was part of the group. And at the end, you know, in this movie, you just saw how everybody was just trying to really make sure that, you know, <laughs> they could save his life and things like that. But right. yeah, I would say, yeah, this movie really, really, um, I think it did very well for, you know, at first I was like, well, where's this going? But then, you know what? After you watch it a couple of times, you're like, damn, this is a really, really good movie. I loved it. Yeah. 
I have to agree. Me, I, I just really loved this movie and enjoyed it. When I first sat there in the theater and I was watching, I was like you, both of you, I was a little bit skeptical. It's like, like Frank said, right. how could they make lightning in a bottle? I was expecting to cry my eyes out, have tears come out <laughs> of sorrow because for a long time I thought, and usually the speculation is, is that for every movie they had a death. Groot died, Yandu died, and then each of those title uh, logo letters in each of those movies had the color of the person who died. And this one, they kind of kind of hinted at it with the whole gold and brown that was <laughs> right. there for instead of straight brown like it was in the first one. So you knew it was Rocket. Well, obviously, he did die for a moment, but he didn't. Uh, he came back and, right. and created. Uh, I guess he died and was reborn. But uh, it did. Th- but the thing that we get out of this, and I always love it because it's what James Gunn gives us out of these movies. Every time we see it, they are filled with heart. You get a family that is dysfunctional, but right. still come together for each other. And it just reminds me of a lot of friends, family, everything else that we all know. You could uh, you could relate to it in some way, uh, but yeah. they, they always just come together even at the best or worst at times part of it that i love that oh i i just love the soundtrack itself you know <laughs> yeah. james gunn is uh granted for every movie he's put out from these this series each album became a legacy into its own and i just want to pick that man's brain to see hey how did you come up with this song now the coolest part was this went from like you got 80s 90s and 2000s Right. Songs in this mix at this right. point and some off world weird song. Well, too. from what I read is that he these are just this is just uh, random music that he has on his own playlist and that he likes. And that's why he I wouldn't be them. surprised. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. So. Yeah, he picked them. The only thing is, I, I've heard some people say, you know, the, there were some people that criticized some of the music. So a good example, like the Beastie Boys. Yeah, that comes out. There were people going, you do realize that the Beastie Boys has a huge library of music. Why is it that every single movie out there is always picking the damn same song? No, no, so, no Sleep Till yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah, exactly. So because they were it's like, awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, but if a movie already did it like two or three times, why pick it again? You understand? Yeah, it's just it's like, like, oh, I would have st- loved to have. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have had Intergalactic show up in there. And <laughs> that would have been like yeah. a lot more fitting. Right. That's what I'm saying. So it that was that's the one thing that they that, that was their complaint. Their complaint was just like, hey, you know, eh. their PC Boys has such a huge library. You could have picked probably anything else that would have fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, who knows? I mean, that's something that only James Guns knows why. Uh but something you uh you mentioned, Mark, you know, mm-hmm. the uh the death uh that never came around because the marketing was genius. They really oh, yeah. made oh, yeah. it seem like they were somebody was that going, tear. Yeah, they were that somebody us. was gonna die. And yeah. if you went on the internet and you looked at everybody that was trying to, you know, review Decipher these movies, who's gonna before, die? Was it Quill? Who's gonna was die? It Is rocket? it gonna be uh, right? It's gonna be Drax because, of course, you know, Batista said he'll never come back to the Guardians. Yeah, and all these things. But I don't know if you noticed, like in throughout the entire movie, there were scenes where you're like. Oh, this is when this happens. is this is when so and so dies. So when uh, when Drax gets shot in the front of his chest and the back of his chest, you're like, right. oh, is this it? Yeah. Then there's a part with Nebula also getting shot and she's bleeding from her mouth, and you're like, oh, damn, wait a minute, Nebula's going out. So <laughs> and they just had all these that you had Peter Quill, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had everybody who had almost like a death scene, and in the end, it never came around. <laughs> yeah which is i, I think- thought for sure that it was going to be mantis because in the uh <laughs> holiday special they find out that they're brother and sister and i was yeah. like the the face that quill makes when he's in the trailer i was like oh that's ne- that's a uh, mantis dying that's right there <laughs> I, either mantis it could have been gomora because a lot of people thought right. also gomora i mean yep. there was i mean just that one shot made it seem like anything could have happened <laughs> you know <laughs> I yeah. doubt Cracklin they were gonna feel that way, but who knows? But yeah, it was just kind of like it, it was a death that never came around, and I and I feel like 
James Gunn probably sat there and giggled his ass giggled off. His- that's yeah, you're right. He's there at the at the keyboard, just <laughs> giggling his way as he's writing yeah, it. Giggling, yeah. going, "If like, you guys only knew, <laughs> none of them are gonna die." I could get them with this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm sure he edited that trailer. Oh, I'm sure he did too. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. But yeah, it's uh, like to to continue on about the music though. I was sitting in there now, mind you. I'm a kid of born in the, in the early, early 70s, like you guys. So I grew up on like metal and stuff like that. And, you know, I was born in 72, but I, I got into Faith No More when, at a yeah. young age when they first came out and they put something that I always wanted to hear in a, in a movie. And we got, we care a lot by Faith No More with Chuck Mosley yep. singing and who went off to, you know, he was only in the band for two albums, but he went off to go sing with Bad Brains, but I was sitting there and I feel bad for the people next to me because I knew the lyrics and they're like, what is this song? <laughs> How do you know this lyric? Yeah. Okay. Um, you've been hiding in a bottle. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just loved it for the fact the way the music brought me to it. And to touch on what, like, what you said, Rob, with how the growing of certain characters, you drew yourself more towards Nebula. I drew right. more towards Mantis. And Mantis okay. has grown a lot to into her right. own person and personality, love and acceptance. She doesn't feel like she's being bullied by Drax anymore. She's bullying right. Drax. <laughs> yeah. like, she, she definitely you love shouts him. a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, <laughs> you had to do that. <laughs> she wants to. Yeah, she wants to be heard. She basically is like, you know, I've been under you know the thumb of other people for the longest time right yeah she right. was under ego's control for so long being hushed up hello <laughs> so <Yeah>. loud <laughs> she's like the little mousy g- woman from police academy that right it's like come on Oops. speak it and then she just comes out get away from me you turkeys <laughs> It's like yeah. one of us. <laughs> no, I, I like her character a lot because, like you were saying, you know, it's just she went from being the the mousy little shy one to be more a lot more assertive, but still a lot more caring. Yes, towards like especially towards Drax. I really like the fact. Right. That I like the way she defended Drax for being stupid. There was that for one being scene. stupid. She made him forget because you you could see that it's like yo, it really I mean, hurt his feelings. Right, it hurt his feelings, but. It's like she was saying, he's the only one that doesn't hate himself. And and you sit there yeah. and you go, it's yeah, true. You know what? You're right. <laughs> he's just kind of like this free carrying guy that just does it. You know, he does stupid things. But I, and I, actually, I, I, that is my favorite part. When he turns around and he knows the language and they're like, oh, how do yeah. you know the language? He was like, how come you never asked? <laughs> <laughs> he figured it out it's very simplistic right. it's like speaking group right if you think about it it was like speaking group because they had like the, the same words over and over again yeah. he kind of figured it out and right. was like oh okay i can relate speaking about group how awesome was it that at the end of the movie he says i love you guys yes right, right? but if you notice none of the characters bat an eye when he said that yes. and it was more of James Gunn finally letting the audience hear yeah. what they've been hearing all along mm-hmm. so it's like oh now the audience is part of the family mm. and so now you get to hear how Groot really sounds compared mm-hmm. to just I am Groot because or, just like Nebula, yeah. Nebula, Nebula, uh, not Nebula, uh, Gamora was basically the odd man out oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> in this one. And she was always saying, how the hell uh, are you guys are just you making, guys are making this shit. up, right? Yeah. You guys are yeah. making this up every time he says I'm Groot. But then at the end, she, she understood him. And then right. at the very end, we all understood him. And Correct. I thought that was a really cool touch yeah. to that whole moment where it's like, oh, now we're part of this whole, this whole family, yeah. which is really cool. Which was a uh, which was a take back from uh, the first Guardians movie when he says we are Groot, right? right? Meaning that we are family. The cool thing about when you talked about Gamora and him not realize her not understanding him, 
was another callback to Quill in the first movie where he goes, can somebody tell Giving Tree I already know his name? <laughs> because that's all he understood. He didn't understand Groot by then. Right. By the second movie, he started understanding. And then by all the other MCU films, everybody learned his language and knew how to talk to Groot or Correct. understand him. So exactly. it's like it just like it was a turn of events. It was her starting over from where Quill was. And then he she finds her family with the Ravagers. Right. But, so I, I think that's pretty cool because it's kind of them starting over, which Honestly, with all these actors leaving, they could come back at any time if they wanted to to jump into that pond. You yeah, know that they left James, it open for that. Yeah, they left yeah. it open. I don't see any of them saying, "No, I'm not coming back for that." Well, mm, Zoe, I don't know, man. But Dave you know, Batista Avatar seems 4 like <laughs> is coming out. Do you want to do that, or do you want to do this? <laughs> Dave Batista really looked like uh, like he was just like, yeah, listen, I'm done with this. I'm going to follow him to the DC universe now. <laughs> well, Which a lot know, of the, that's a lot what's of the characters, happen. that's what, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, he also had his wife in the movie along with his brother, so. Right, yeah. But he likes, a J- that, that's, all right, we'll go into our favorite moments, but that's part of my favorite moment. And it's, no matter what movie you get. From James Gunn, you're going to see the same people in those particular films. So right. we get Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion has been in all three <laughs> Guardians films. That is what's so funny. Uh, you got his wife, Jennifer Holland, and she plays Administrator Qual. Right. And then, and then she was also Amelia Harcourt in Peacemaker to, yeah. uh, for Peacemaker alumni. And then uh, Chikuri Iwugi. Uh, who plays the High Evolutionary, if that's how you sp- say his name. I'm sorry if I'm destroying his name. He was sorry. also in Peacemaker. Yeah, he was also in Peacemaker yeah. as Clemson Mern. Uh, we yeah. also get Eagly. Eagly was in there, yeah. He was in it. He was actually in the Guardians. They actually used that same CG. And uh, James actually <laughs> stated that in Twitter because somebody yeah, said... Yeah, he confirmed it. He confirmed it, that uh, hmm. the CG recreation of the series, you know, he he had it in there for a reason. Which is pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, you got um, so boom already DC Marvel crossover. See, yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> but I I should have I should have known I should have made more friends in the film industry. <laughs> I just did. You know, I should have known somebody that was like you know. So it's like, hey Rob, you want to be in this movie? I'll be like, hell yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna take some. I'm gonna take some vacation time out of my current job to go be in a movie and then come back, <laughs> or be related to somebody like Sean, Sean Gunn, who's James Gunn's brother. Oh my brother. god, right? He plays yeah. the physical version of Rocket. He does all the mocap stuff, all the C- for the CG. Uh, he actually did the voice of Little Rocket as well. Correct. And then we also have a Marvel alumni actually um, doing Lila's voice, and that's Linda Cardellini. Who mm-hmm. played uh, uh, Hawkeye's wife? Uh, yes, in, in like all the other movies that we have, and obviously in uh, Hawkeye TV series. Hawkeye series, yeah, yeah. So, and we uh, we got Tara Strong in there, who mm-hmm. we all know, but that's another Marvel alumnus because she is in Loki as Miss Minutes. Correct for uh, voiceover work. I mean, Tara so, Strong is like a legend in the voiceover acting oh, yeah. world. I mean, oh yes, yeah. So, but it, it's pretty cool that you know you have people because Gunn always like just think about Yondu himself. Yeah, Rooker has been in almost every James Gunn movie <laughs> that's been out there for the fun of it. You know, between Slither, right. Brightburn, at the very end of Brightburn, he comes out right. too, which is DC based if you think about it. Super evil Superman or Super Kid, yep. and then. You have all the Guardians movies, actually two Guardians movies, the Guardians. Well, we talked about him on the holiday special. He was there for the cartoon version right? of it kind of being like a Star Wars uh, holiday special edition, but uh, <laughs> came out far better. I like the fact that he did that on purpose. He definitely wanted to make it seem like that type of, uh, ho- you know, like that um, Star yeah. Wars uh, thing. So, But yeah, he... I I think what he does what what James Gunn is able to do is put his hands on it and make it his own. Yep. Correct. 
So one other thing to make it his own. All right, we we didn't get a chance to do Suicide Squad and cover that. But do you remember what was the running joke in that movie that nobody really talked about with the starfish and them coming on the faces? I don't recall, but go ahead. I mean, the okay. only thing... The starfish and the mouths that were on them looked like vaginas. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was an Did ongoing not... thing, and a lot of people were talking about that. So, uh, this is where I lead into my first point, uh, my other point, and then I'll let you guys talk about your other points. The Agoroscope planet, or ship, or whatever you want to call it. Right. It's made of living matter. Well, it looked like a male scrotum to me that wasn't shaved properly or groomed. <laughs> okay, so uh, y- you know what? You and I talked about that, and i seen this movie already four times. I don't know where you seen the scrotum part. Maybe you got scrotum in your, in Wait, your brain. <laughs> just <laughs> so that you know, if, it, if, if it's yours and it looks like that, you need to see a doctor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But do you see? Do you see some of the hair when they were on the the outside trying to dig in? Yeah, it was it was Dude, nasty. Th- that could just be like your like your facial hair or something. I don't know. What, like again, I don't know where you saw scrotum, but go I don't know. I, <laughs> you I do you, it... man. You do you. Can we uh, uh, take a moment and give it up to James Gunn for making us care tremendously? Yeah, for a shitload of CG characters. Oh yeah, great CG I mean, characters. Rocket. You had Rocket, you had, uh, you know, uh, Lila, I mean, you know, his friends, Lila and, and the other two. I mean, you cared so much about them. You care about their deaths. You also cared about when that one beautiful scene where Rocket sees all the little raccoons and he's trying to rescue them. Yeah. And it's just a very touching moment that he's just trying to then. And it's just everything is fucking CG. And you're like, how the hell am I? Do I have a tear in my eye for a freaking yeah. fake character he gave us and watership it's... down yes yeah if you uh, well our age people are of our age we know what know that down. well yeah you guys would know what i'm talking about but watership down when i came out on tv based upon the original book you cared for those rabbits oh yeah and you <laughs> cried as a kid when you watched that when, exactly. you when i watch it now i still cry <laughs> But yeah, no, yeah. that was that was the one thing I, I took out of this. Like, how the fuck did he make you care for these characters so much? And you're like, yeah. holy shit. I mean, good for him, man. Yeah. Frank, you got anything that you wanted to bring up that you liked? I like I've, I already said that, like, my favorite one was where they, you know, underestimate the teeth of the uh, uh, Drax. Mm-hmm. But I also like when you said the uh, about the, the raccoons. Uh, I love the part where he finally looks over and he sees the little placard that says raccoon. <laughs> right. And he says, he realizes, holy crap, everybody's been calling me a, a raccoon. And I've been saying I'm not. I am. Yeah. Right. And he just embraces it and takes the full name of Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, that was actually awesome. a really cool scene when he says, I'm yeah. ro- you know, I'm Rocket Raccoon. And I was like, finally, he says, you know, his yeah, comic book name, name, which is really cool. <laughs> exactly. So. And, and to talk about the uh, CG that we you were talking about before, Rob, think about it. When we got uh, Michael Rosenbaum, the CG on his face was amazing for the character that he had. I had no freaking clue that was him. Really? None I can tell. Oh, I mean, with he, the... Uh... Like yeah, the diamonds they, they look like diamond yeah, yeah. face. I actually like, recognized him. Like, did that. you really? I didn't recognize him until I saw him in the premiere, and I'm like, "Why is he in the I premiere?" Was like, That's my. He was it. actually in the second movie, but the thing is, is that the the CG he, it was only for a quick scene with Stallone at the very end with all the rest of them, right? And that was it. Yeah, no, I was just like, "Why is he there?" And then all of a sudden, you know, that then I saw something with an interview with him, and or very briefly, and I was like, "Oh." He's in it. And then when I saw it, I was like, okay, now I recognize him. Because he's friends with James Gunn. That's right, the reason. Right. Same thing with Stallone and, and a lot of the other people that were there. Dude, again, uh, I should have made I should have made friends with somebody, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> uh, Are you doing favorite scenes now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so here's very a quick scene that I like. Uh the scene uh where Quill is trying to tell Gamora 
that uh, there might be a ch uh, chance and everybody's actually listening through the intercom. <laughs> and it's like, yes. I thought, but I thought blue was blue. I was like, no, blue is for everybody. And then, they're, they're, and it's like sh they're saying all these different. And I'm like, I'm so confused right now. Yeah, well, exactly. Mantis I confuses everybody. Green is for yellow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Red is for. Yes. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, sense. <laughs> yeah, it is right. I was like right there with uh, Peter Quill. I was like, dude, I'm right with you, man. I don't understand none of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that was also um, a cool comedy gimmick out of that right that, oh i absolutely. just enjoyed i i just love the fact that we get it's like these key moments just like when they finally get into the uh orgoroscope and you got mantis and <laughs> and drax walking in and then they get <laughs> stopped at the booth and it goes you love him <laughs> you're in love with him <laughs> and you can see the look yeah. on drax's Drax face like face like you like every time <laughs> all the time she does this but that was actually pretty cool i like the uh was it uh uh furlon um what's his name who which who <laughs> i guess uh furlon uh what's his uh, gosh not that word for long. Um, <laughs> what am I thinking about? I, oh my I'm literally God. sitting here going, Edward. I'm Earl? trying to figure out. <laughs> no, uh, what's his name? Uh, for, uh from uh, Firefly. Oh, Nathan Fillion. Oh, Fillion. Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Jesus Fillion. Christ, Fillion. Christ, you're Fillion. Off. Yeah, I was so off. I'm sorry. You could cut that out. Uh, uh, no, I'll leave it. <laughs> no, we're leaving that in. <laughs> I did that um, to myself a bunch of times. But I like I like the I like his casual way. I mean, first of all, the suits that they were wearing was just so stupid. Yes. But oh, I like God. the casual thing. And then that part where he says, uh, what is it? Uh, it's like, um, oh, you you know, that like how he explains about Drax, he goes, he goes, Oh, everybody has a stupid friend or something it's like, like uh, that. I got one of those too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just him very I like cool. this is him, <laughs> and he points him yeah. out. To him. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ooh. man! But the, another the, go ahead. No, no. The, the the gimmicks like you have, like with Nebula and Mantis when they're sitting at the table right. on that. What was it called? New Earth. Was it yes. called? New yeah, okay. yeah, New Earth. Yeah, and they're they're sitting there at the table, and she's like, she gets, oh, I'm loving this. So she's drinking the liquid that they give him, but she yes, gets like, like Mantis is trying to explain it, and she's yelling at Drax for like laying on the couch, going like, stop being, uh, he's being, uh. he goes, he's like, <laughs> oh, you try to explain that they're going to help their friend who's dying. He's like, oh, your death thing goes, uh, your your stupid thing, yeah, is, uh. it's the same, it's confusing. They both look the same. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I like the. <laughs> Hey, this is the first movie that we have an F bomb. Yes, right, a PG thirteen film and MCU that actually had an MC, F bomb for the MCU. Yeah, and it was that part of the uh, when they're trying to open the door, which I just thought it was so cool. Nebula trying to open the door, and he's trying to tell her, you know, how to open a uh, a very old car, which I thought it was cool. But yeah, I like yeah. that part, <laughs> which was pretty cool too. Because if you think of it, that planet was based in the late seventies, early eighties at that point, yeah. with all the style of cars and houses that they had. It, it was just so dated for its time, I guess. Uh, and it looked perfect. revolutionary. Loved it <laughs> back then. <laughs> but then again that's what the, at the time he probably came out in comics so that was a reference to him right. by somebody at marvel going make it this decade <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I mean those were those were pretty cool scenes another cool one that they had and this actually goes to the cinematography the cg and the slow motion matrix style capture of like the hallway scene and standoff oh, yeah. towards the end of the oh movie. Oh my god! Probably the one whole of the best 360, scenes. Yeah. You could lose popcorn <laughs> in the middle of the movie as you're watching this thing on. If it was all yeah. around you, you know that was an awesome scene. And I like the way they showcased every character Everybody. had a, their own little moment. Correct to shine on that. I thought it was fantastic on that. That was a excellent, excellent scene. Yeah. The one thing that and and it's basically what we've been saying from the beginning. It's the heart that James Gunn injects into these movies, and even mm -hmm. scenes like that, where it's an action scene, but you that's getting everybody their spot in the action scene Correct. adds to that heart, you know? So yeah, no, that it. was phenomenal. And there were like some really key moments. I could recall two key moments when they were showing the characters. One of them is a uh, rocket 
when he jumps in the air and he's firing, if you were to freeze that, that was just such a comic book pose. Yeah. Yes. That he did. And then Peter Quill, when he was on the floor and then firing up behind the other, like the bad guy, that was another moment that just seemed really like there was some really if you go through the movie, there's some shots that if you freeze, Mm -hmm. you're like, that just looks like a comic book, which is really cool. And and that's one thing that Marvel has done pretty well in, in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some movies that don't do it that well, but you know, it's, it's those little, it's those little moments where you could freeze and you go, boom, that could be the cover of a comic book. Right. Very true. Anything else that you guys liked? I, I could tell you one thing I didn't like, and it's me agreeing with Rob about Adam Warlock. It's uh, just yes. not the character that we wanted that we all knew from the comic itself. Exactly. Right. Because he was supposed to be part of like the Avengers and stuff like that mm-hmm. later on in certain comics. And he was such a big, huge thing. My brother was into, he had the Warlock series comics at one point. He had a whole collection. Now, mind you, did he keep his comics right? No. He let them get all weathered, (laughs) all humidity, and let them go to crap. But how much did he get for his big, huge collection? $10. There you go. (laughs) But but the character was not what we wanted, that we anticipated, because it was such a letdown from what we thought we were going to get from Guardians 2. Yeah. to now so basically uh they didn't let him cook long enough a high evolutionary what <laughs> let him cook longer in his little incubator and that's what their claim the sovereigns were saying that w- was the issue even though he made the sovereigns right the one thing with adam warlock if you really think about it adam warlock in the comic books was such a major player especially for the uh infinity, uh, infinity yeah, yeah uh, he was. infinity gauntlet mm-hmm and it was just something that they never bought in. But mm-hmm. his role in that entire thing uh, was huge. And yeah. to just have him be kind of like who he is now, I was just like, yeah. okay. <laughs> and Will sure. Poulter. The whole is, Captain uh, Marvel, like Captain Marvel yeah. in Infinity Gauntlet, that's basically Adam Warlock uh, in the comic book. Yeah, they just yeah. replaced one hero for another is right. what they did. And honestly, these are... Um, they're just, I have to say it every time. And this is something that Steve kind of battered into me within the first two years of podcasting on this uh, podcast. These are movies, uh, movies and shows that are adapted from comics. So it's never going to be 100% accurate. Right. And with Marvel at this point, with like the Infinity War and uh, the Infinity so- Stone Saga or Gems, they were actually Infinity Gems, not Stones. Yeah. Yes, but uh, and, and, and there's they, a whole reason for that I hear, but I don't want to get into that. Same here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you had other characters within that that stood out. We didn't have Lady Death, and that's who Thanos was trying to appeal. Right. So that story is completely changed. But it also makes me appreciate the comic for the comic, and me stating to somebody who's never read those comics, "All right, you know this story from the movie, right? Go read this." Or if somebody read it and didn't want to see these movies, well, I can tell you what's the benefit to this if you watch these movies now. And just take it from a different point of view. So you can't have everything verbatim. If that were the case, if we had everything exactly the way they were, I would love to see the Secret Wars that we're supposed to get. But that's not the Secret (laughs) Wars we're getting. We're getting an amalgam of what we're getting from the MCU now. And then eventually it's going to be tied into what they did in the comics and the later comics from the tw- late 2010s that they did with secret wars. So you right. get battle world and everything. So it's going to be a majority of it, of being variants that are out there of different people from different, uh, like universes, uh, multiverse as I right. should say. Right. So, you know, we could uh, have listen, I mean, very much different ones. You have to remember that, with when marvel was about to go bankrupt and they started selling the film rights to all these different studios yeah they never thought they were going to be in this (laughs) position to have the most successful film like we're having a fire sale everything must go exactly you know so to when you look at the comic books especially infinity war or infinity gauntlet um the secret wars you had the Spider-Man world in there. You had the X-Men world in there. Yeah. You had Fantastic right. Four. You had all yeah. these characters that are were a huge, what I would say, uh, part of those stories. Mm-hmm. 
when you don't have those rights, you're like, yeah. okay, we're going to have to do something different. That's understandable, definitely, uh, with that. So Adam Warlock, though, I still think it, he should have done something a little different. But yeah, that's just me. Make him a little <laughs> bit more a little special. More yeah. And I mean, look, things change. I mean, what I'm glad is that they didn't ch- they, certain characters, I would say, for the hardcore fans, mm-hmm. they don't like it. But for the average fans, they're like, all right, so you know what? Adam Warlock, all right, whatever. Right. And Will Poulter did a good job playing the character, I thought, oh, yeah, what no. he was given. Right. Definitely a comedic take on it, especially when he's got the little dog and the dog's licking itself. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I'll teach him not to do that. You know, or when he bless away the Ravager and they're trying to get in touch with Gamora's trying to get in contact with them. But he, she goes, I told you to put some influence into him, not kill him. So, <laughs> right. And he burns the whole thing with his powers. But he also has a redemption arc in this, which is pretty cool. Right. And then he becomes part of the Guardians at the end. Which is part of the comic book, believe it or not. Yes. So, and the little girl that's part of the whole thing, she's also in, she's the character, from what I hear, in um, in Guardians, but grown up. Yes. A grown up version of her. I forgot Correct. what her name is. Same here. Uh, yeah. But she's, uh, yeah. No, so pretty cool. But there, there was Already. a lot to take away from that. Uh, yeah, th- th- there's so many things we could discuss about this movie that uh, is so fun and interesting. <laughs> but th- was there anything else that you guys wanted to bring up? The only thing I, I had left to really talk about was uh, Nebula. And all right, we, we talked about how uh, Rocket got Bucky's arm in the holiday special. <laughs> Now, her new arm, if you look at it, looks like, and especially the tech that comes out of her, looks like a mix of Wakandan and Stark tech, if you think about it. Because the arm looks kind of got that little, that kind of grilled look that that Bucky had, the Winter Soldier had on Mm -hmm. his arm. But this one is a little bit more Yeah, but his arm was never, could never transform. Like, that, that seems like more Tony Stark, but remember that according to this movie rocket basically is a freaking genius yeah who exactly could build, who could build anything so i'm sure and yeah. plus nebula does say you know he he gave me my arm or something yeah. like that or so i don't know that's a good question i mean whether he got stuff from bucky's arm that he get things from tony stark who knows well, he likes people's eyeballs. He wants some people's legs. <laughs> eyeballs, legs, <laughs> arms. You know what's a really Just cool scene? It funny. <laughs> the cool thing that I liked about was uh, Cosmo, the whole Cosmo and Craglin thing. Oh, where yeah. Like, bad a, dog. Yeah, bad dog. And it's like, no, I'm a good dog. Say I'm a good dog. I'm not a bad dog. <laughs> and then in the end, it's like, you know. Just like, tell her. Yeah, in the end, it was like, no, she's a good dog. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, Cos- Cosmo... Uh, obliterate so uh one right. of the bad guys yeah yeah so i thought that was actually cool that's part of the relationships that they had in it that that kind of developed and i i think that's what really they were their key focus was yeah how the duck was in there for a while too i mean it yeah. wasn't like yeah. a little shot it was just <laughs> they're all playing poker or something <laughs> like that he's just sitting on the right. table too so i thought that was really cool yeah although they changed his look i don't know if you noticed his look is different yes Compared to the end credits of the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, it is. It is. He's yeah. well. He's changed o- over right. the course of several films with the CG. Right. Still, uh, still voiced by Seth Green. Yep. And uh, well, the one thing listeners got to pay attention to when we get to these, um, <laughs> like I say, variants versions, <laughs> we're not gonna get. The Lucas produced Howard the Duck <laughs> <laughs> coming out in Secret Thank Wars. Goodness. <laughs> Damn it! I want to see that. Oh in 4- my God. I want to see that in 4K with Dolby Atmos. The original <laughs> Howard the Duck. I saw that in the theaters when it came out in '86. I want to see. I want to see a woman going, you know, in bed with a duck. Well, that, I don't mind that. That was Leah Thompson, and she was uh, like in lingerie at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there has to, look there. There has to be something completely wrong when you look at this movie. You go, so there's a woman in bed with a duck. Well, it's also like that in the comic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> and you but you also have forget- to realize that character came out in the 70s. Right. You you could forget. Listen, there's a lot of things in the 70s that you just wouldn't do now. OK, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't. Well, that's 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 a message we give out to current producers, directors. If you're going to redo a movie, do not do Zardoz. We don't need somebody in Sean Connery's <laughs> little jumper with a, you know, with the ba- banana head. hammock. <laughs> yeah, banana hammock that he's got with <laughs> suspenders over God, God damn it. I own one of those. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm, we- I'm wearing it right now. All righty then. Ooh. No video, people. Sexy. It's okay. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, the Zargnut joke coming back was pretty funny, though. It was. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I thought she was going to tear his head off because he's like, no more Zargna than that. He's eating them. And she's just looking at him like with this <laughs> these needles of death, you know, like going <laughs> from her eyeballs. Oh, I have to say, man, that the part with uh, uh, Peter kind of like contemplating the whole nebula thing, you know, it's oh. like, oh. yes. Oh. Yeah. He, he picked a really Stop good set of like eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she just like second she goes no <laughs> she even I'm not your la- so I'm like I'm not your lap dog or something I'm not sh- I forgot what the but it was just funny I was like oh poor Peter man he's in <laughs> such desperate uh, shape that's the one thing I love about that too Karen Gillan over the years has grown such an actor that she's she's able oh, yeah. to catch all these co- comedic now she started on Doctor Who but uh, and before that she was a model but <laughs> but between Jumanji and now, big difference with like comedic timing and everything else. I think yeah. that's where she grabbed it. But uh, if you guys don't know, she was also in the Netflix movie The Bubble too. So yeah, that was pretty Bubble. funny to watch. I don't that other one it. that uh, they have as well. Uh, something milkshake. Oh, uh, gunpowder milkshake. Yeah. Oh, she was go. she was yeah. in that. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was one of the producers too. Huh. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But she she's good for dra- dramatic roles like too, like an Oculus. Right. She was an Oculus as well. Cool. But um yeah. Well, that's it for me with all my uh, favorite moments and everything uh, unless you guys some <laughs> have something else you want to add. Uh there's just so many. I mean, the entire movie is a favorite moment. <laughs> it, it's true. <laughs> it is true. You know, I'll be very honest with you. I mean, there was just wait Oh, if I, if I had to list, I mean, it was just it would just be basically almost every scene has something that is really <laughs> cool in this movie. One that we didn't talk about was when Mantis goes into that cage and that really ugly monster is in there or not oh monster, my God. but the, and she's like, I, I'm not making that face at you. <laughs> I was making that face at somebody behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realize that was James Gunn's voice? Really? I would, yeah, that I'm was James Gunn's voice. Yeah. <laughs> so he played that little character. I thought that was funny. Oh man, which character was it again? It's uh. So it's... when they they're opening all the cages to let all the kids out, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's this like a little thing that just looks like a mutated little thing oh, with teeth. Got, like a hand up here and a face. yeah. Oh, that's and right. It's... That's right. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he's that. Like, Hi. He <laughs> had this. It was just despicable. Like the, the character was just. I, I don't get what it is with these movies. Like in Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania, we got Broccoli Head hitting on Scott Lang's daughter or no, <laughs> his wife in the bar. And he's like, oh my God, bro. Like, or, or whoever it was. I think it might have been Hank Pym and it was Janet Van Dyne. But, <laughs> but in this one, they have like uh, a carrot head guy. And he was yeah. pointing him out as they were going to kill him. And yeah, they, uh, vegetable heads are. Kind they don't of like a vegetable. Thing. I'm wondering if the first Guardians had like maybe some kind of like vegetable in there. Now I'm going to have to go back and probably look, look. Right? Yeah. yeah. Go through your steel books and see. Uh, like a Brussels <laughs> sure in the prison. Like that. <laughs> My steel book broke <laughs> from that one. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. I got every steel book. Well, I have to, a- I have every, I have a lot of steel books uh, from Marvel. That's what I try to keep collecting on. That's why I, that way I don't sell them or throw them away. Guarantees yeah. me holding on to them. <laughs> I 
I, when I started collecting the Marvel stuff, which they're so cool, there was just no matter how bad the movie is. So Ant Man, <laughs> Ant Man, you know, Quantum Mania, <laughs> the yeah, I Eternals. I didn't get Wakanda uh, forever. Eternals. Oh, it was. I, it's still there. It's still in the stores. I know. I saw it. It's and it, they have two different covers. But the thing is, I was like, you know what? I just can't stop now. I mean, I'm collecting. Look, yes. So here, now I'm going to tell you a very quick story. So yesterday, I decided to uh, download an app. It's called CL, CLC Movie Collector, right? Yeah. It's fifteen. It's fifteen dollars a year, but you could catalog all your movies, every movie that you have. And so I went ahead and did that. I and it has a scanner, so you go ahead and scan every movie and stuff like that, right? And first of all, uh, I have about six hundred something movies, which is really. <laughs> I was like, I didn't realize how many movies I had. But in Steelbooks, I'm at 260 something movies. I was like, oh my God. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like ridiculous the amount of like Steelbooks I have. I was if like, you got $10 for every Steelbook, you'd still have. <laughs> oh, yeah. Geez. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but and the, we... the value of those go up because of the rarity of it. That's the funniest part. If it's not open, even more. But. And in some cases, you know, I bought like I bought a I I bought doubles without me knowing. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get this one. And next, <laughs> thing, you know, I was like, I have this damn thing. <laughs> but uh, like, and then of course I had uh, what was it? Uh, when I ordered Jaws, it never came in the mail, so I called. Uh, this was through Best Buy, and Best Buy just sent me another one, right? <laughs> well, two weeks later, I got the other Jaws that was supposed to come in originally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like okay, now I got two, but yeah, no, I got a lot of steel books, which is, it's like, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's Damn. a metric ton of you know metal. <laughs> well, I I was going through because well, I'm downsizing a lot of my DVDs. I'm trying to put everything towards more digital, so I have like a little server. Right. The steel books, I'm not giving away. I'm not getting rid of anything that like box sets that are hard to come by. My Ray Harryhausen DVD box sets. I have two of them. Nice. Th- those are good. Got to hold on to them. Got to keep my love for Godzilla intact with the Blu-rays and even some of the DVDs you can't even get anymore. And on top of that, like the Planet of the Apes series on Blu-ray, stuff like that, that has like extra commentary stuff that you can never get. Right. So I, I'm holding on to those, but I was going through all that and then I didn't realize it's like I went and I'm looking, there's like cases of stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I, ha- I haven't <laughs> had the urge. I'm like, it's already on my drive. Why am I even bothering going digging for a physical media copy? Because I'm just going to watch the movie. I'm not going to sit there and watch watch it with audio commentary. It's not right. like I'm watching Blade Runner for the 30th right. time and I have to do it with the extra fi- five seconds that they have in the movie with the audio commentary <laughs> explaining it. Well, you know, you know what's interesting about that is just when uh, DVDs first came out, right, which was really in, when Bl- I think it's either DVDs or Blu-rays. I'm not sure which of those two. They mm-hmm. had like a shitload of commentaries. They yes. had right. so much behind the scenes stuff. Like they really, really packed those discs or they, they came with like two discs or three discs, but they really packed it with everything you could possibly imagine behind yeah. the scenes. Now they don't do that anymore. So they'll yeah. do like maybe, oh, okay, so here's half an hour of this, uh, a few little minutes of this and this, and here's like two deleted scenes and one commentary. And that's as far as it goes. I remember like uh, Terminator 2 when mm-hmm. I first got that. If anybody has that, you'll know like the original, you'll notice that there's the movie, there's commentary by the director, commentary right. by the director and actors, but then and but then they had D box track. Huh? They had a D box track on one of them. They on, did. On, and on they the rem- I remember D box right that they had some of that, but they also had like, I believe with that one, they had something like maybe like, I don't know, 10 hours of behind the scene, <laughs> how to make things. And then they had just some of them was like, how do they do the CG on a certain, right. you know, scene or something. Now they don't even cover any of that shit. All those things, because I guess the studios just realized, like, we're just wasting a lot of money on something that 99% of the people out there just don't give a shit about anymore. Exactly. It's only the hardcore fans. And if they want to see that, well, they got the internet now. So it it's kind of a shame 
Yeah. I keep them because, you know, for me, it's more of a little, uh, what I would say, uh, a little history on that movie or something like that and everything that you could possibly have on it. But not only that, I keep especially my 4K stuff because it still sounds way better and looks mm-hmm. better yeah, through a does. disc right. than it does anytime through streaming. So for anybody out there, especially if you got a good sound system, yeah, collect your media because <laughs> as Hold you on know, to some of your media. Yeah, as you know, with streaming services and how things change. Servers go down. Lic- yeah, well, not only that, but licensing is licensing. like, oh, well, you know what? Now I, you know, I have right. this, but what is it? A studio did it for a moment and it's like, okay, because of the licensing and they're still trying to get more, you know, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Now you won't see it for like two or three years and it sucks. Yeah. And then now you're like, oh, I still want to see that movie. Let me go search in the store, and now you can't find it in the store either. Or it's so, not, they're not going to have it in the store at all. They're not going to have it in the store, and then you look on an eBay, and then somebody's selling it for like a hundred bucks, and you're like, "What?" Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're we're going back to old VHS tapes where you couldn't find that old B horror movie that I always wanted to get, or a really bad movie, and only one person in the world has it, so they upcharge it like they did with the VHS back in the yeah. day, nineteen eighty one. When you didn't bring back your, or you lost the VHS, and they're like, well, you owe us $150 for a damn <laughs> tape? Yeah. <laughs> I, rem- I remember those days. Like, yeah, yeah, God help you if you didn't God. rewind. All oh, right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was an extra $2. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, no, it's true. A lot of those movies, and it's funny because uh, the one thing that I would say, uh, like, let's say the Star Wars holiday special, I remember going to convention. It's right. like, hey, Somebody has a copy of the holiday special. Oh, yeah. Now could, it's on YouTube. They were never going to show. Yeah, I was going to say that. Now you can go see it on YouTube. So it's I, on could YouTube imagine, yeah. I could imagine a lot of those old type of movies. And as a matter of fact, there are some streaming services out there yeah. that they specialize in all those B movies that are really bad and stuff like that. So, no, I mean, there's yeah. at least still there's an audience for it. Yeah. And you could possibly find it. But there's some there's some rare stuff out there. Uh, that you just can't find. I mean, Dogma, for example, is just something you don't see streamed anywhere. And unless wow. you have the DVD or the Blu-ray, that's the only way you're going to see it. Well, you got to thank Weinstein for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that best. I have it here somewhere. I don't. I, I have it oh, on so do Blu-ray, I. too. I have it on DVD yeah. only, not Blu-ray. I think I only have it on DVD. Yeah. Well, that, that, that was only. something I brought up at the stash. Somebody said, you have it on Blu-ray? I said, I think I had it on Blu-ray twice. <laughs> and I gave it to a friend. And they're like, how the hell? I was like, you guys got the DVDs? <laughs> You're at it's the stash. Great, it's still a great movie to watch, man. Oh, it's yeah. It's still such a great movie to watch. I love right. that movie. Well, that's it for my my thoughts and overall notes. Uh, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about other than? No, you, that was, otherwise, that we can was, move on to no, I quotes. Think we covered it. Yeah, we can move on to quotes. I got one which is pretty funny. Okay, it's when Quell's on the he's like on the com with uh, the High Evolutionary. He goes, <laughs> "Screw you, you stretched face RoboCop looking purple nurple <laughs> piece of." He hung up on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because Gamora's looking at him like, "What the hell?" <laughs> it's like all this anger coming out of you. No, that was pretty good quote. I like, you know, when Gamora, you know, again, the whole Gamora, I like the way Gamora and Peter kind of towards the end, she's almost giving in to him, but not quite. You could kind of just see it because she starts to smile at certain things, you know, with him. And but she did say, you know, I like the part where she says, I bet we were fun. And it was just kind of a really nice scene. But I like that quote. I bet we were fun because it was just she realizes, you know, this is a fun group to be with. Hmm. I, 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 again, love that he finally embraced the fact that he is a raccoon and he's okay. It's rocket raccoon. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's just one of those ones that you're like, man, three movies of him saying, or two movies uh, and most <laughs> of one uh, where he's saying, I'm not a raccoon. Hey, I'm not, not a raccoon. raccoon. He he literally would jump at people to kill him because yeah, they're gonna like, kill him. Yeah. Boom, you see him like take off and they gotta stop him. <laughs> I'm gonna call <laughs> your trash a... bandit. Oh, <laughs> trash trash panda. panda. Oh, trash panda. Yeah, he's like trash, trash panda. panda. Yeah. It's so that... much worse. It's so much worse. <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to carry out. <laughs> uh, the one that I have would be from the high evolutionary, and he says, there is no God. That's why I stepped in. That was a cool scene. Thanks. I, I, That's yeah. got balls to it, just to say yeah. that. I like the uh, the whole, again, the nebula with Peter Quill. He, he's like, what? I just never noticed how black your eyes are. And they're like, <laughs> they were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He picked a pretty cell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Let me tell you. James well, Jack writes... always comes up with some cool stuff, too. Like, are we still oh, yeah, pretending Drax. to be angry? <laughs> oh, we're playing angry now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn you, Mantis. <laughs> Master, uh, what is it? Co- uh, Karaya? Master Karaya saying, your Master friend's Karsha? a moron. Yeah. Your friend's a moron. I got one of those two. <laughs> yeah, I got one of those two. Yeah. I get I got one of those two. <laughs> or when they're, uh, when Nebula's asking them, it's like on the radio, like, can you guys bring the ship here? And they're like, no. <laughs> 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 Just don't they tell t- me you're here. They, and they turn around and there he is. And then like it's so yeah. funny the way like just uh, Mantis just points at him. Like if he right. like, it's like a little it's kid. It's like it's him. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the Peter uh Peter Crow is like we were always searching for a family until we found each other. That's that's yeah. the truth. <laughs> yeah. That's and basically he, what this whole movie. Home. That's basically that what all three movies is about. They were always searching for family until they, you know. Until they found each other. Well, they were always there with each other and didn't realize they were already a family. Right. Yeah. But that's it for me for quotes. Me too. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Well, on to uh, comic news that's out there. That could be movie news, comic book news, what have you. I only have a few things to talk about. So, uh, word out on the streets and on the internet says that Loki is doing reshoots now after the whole Uh-oh. Jonathan Majors issues that's going on. Really? So uh, no Not verdict surprised. has been set yet, but reshoots doesn't mean rewriting at any given time. It could right. be just somebody stepping in for somebody. So right. that's where I go thinking, okay, well, they're trying to prep this because we're getting Loki in December, I think. November, December. Right. Something like that. Probably. And so they have more than enough time to fix this just in case. So it's them going into uh, that mode of let's fix this before it gets worse. Because initially the idea of Kang being the big bad was not Marvel, uh, Marvel Disney's first thought. They were thinking of somebody else. Apparently uh, over the years it, it switched. It's just the fact that the way Jonathan Majors hit it with Loki, they ch- right. kind of changed the narrative to him. Right. Now, they could have brought in somebody and alluded to it, because what was the first time that we actually saw Thanos? It was kind of like in sort of right. small shots. They had an alien invasion. They could have explained that for something else. didn't have to necessarily be Thanos, but it just happened to work out over the course of 10 years where they ended up at Endgame. Right. Now, they could have easily done that and said, all right, we're creating the Beyonder. Let's get the Beyonder in here. Or a Nihilus. Let's get a Nihilus in there. I mean, I think they could still do Kang. Remember that Kang, there's so many different versions of him. Yeah. yeah. And and remember, they did the same thing with James Rhodes. So, you know, first Iron Man, then into the second, they they pick, you know, uh, Don Cheadle to be uh, Rhodey. So, yeah, and they could pick pick another Ford. Yeah, they could pick right. Yeah, they could exactly. pick another character. They could recast I, I just don't it. See, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Or Edward Norton and uh, Mark Ruffalo. Exactly. So you know what? It's been done before. It could be done again, and it should be fine. I, I don't think people should be like, oh, you know, whatever. Now the whole thing about him doing what he did, and Ezra Miller doing what he did. Yeah. And Ezra Miller still gets a yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's the part that people I understand was like, why is the black man the one that's getting you know shut out while you know uh, the, 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 the little white kid you know is still gonna be in the uh, DCU? Yeah, I don't know. Got to take that true. up with the powers to be. But that being said, I mean, well, we gotta wait until 
that movie comes out because that that was the next news feature I had was the new trailer is out. I think it's the final trailer that that for which one? Uh, The Flash. Flash. Oh yes. So we got a few new scenes. So uh, the the one thing I don't like is uh, I'm trying to remember who the actor is, and uh, he plays the uh, the dad. He plays basically Barry Allen's dad. Oh, I know who you. I think I know who you're talking about. But yeah, I, I I'll, I'll bring it up right a little quick. Uh, Ron Livingston plays plays the Barry uh Barry Allen's dad. Oh right, right. So he he plays that. But before, if you recall, if you watched the Snyderverse and all that stuff, uh, BVS, it was Billy Crudup. I would okay. rather have seen Billy Crudup come back. Ron Living, I'm not give, saying anything bad about Ron Livingston, but I was just like, wait a minute, I'm so used to that because I remember that. Yeah, I know it was a Snyder movie, but and this right. is not supposed to be the Snyderverse, but you know yeah, when you. I mean, sometimes scheduling uh, problems ha- happen, and actor can't make it. That is true, but uh, yeah. Oh, one thing about Guardians that I forgot, but I'll just throw it in, in here. I just love Nick Santos in uh, Guardians. What part was he playing? Nick Santos? He played the uh, recorder Thiel, the one with all the information about Rocket in his brain that they're trying to oh, get. Oh, the one with the... Oh, the, yes. The... Okay. Yeah, he played Mateo yeah, I remember him in, from, uh... in Superstore. Superstore, yeah. Yeah, he was Mateo. So I thought I thought he was really good. It was a different uh, character for him. Lastly, well... All anticipation is still out there, but finally, they started shooting Deadpool 3 yesterday. Oh, nice. So, the uh, WGA uh, thing that's going on with the writer strike, uh-huh. the whole strike, is not affecting it. Because, honestly... The that only, got written already. Yeah, it got written already. Just look at Gan- James Gunn. He doesn't... Even though he's probably involved with the strike... But he's already doing storyboards at home for the next movie. Well, remember that they could. How, how, well, all the writers can still write things. They just can't submit those to studios. Correct. So, They're, you know, yeah. it's not like you're prohibited from getting in front of a computer and writing. You can still mm-hmm. write. Yeah. It's just you can't sell it or you can't, you know, give it to anybody else. So, I mean, I'm sure that all of these people are still writing. Mm-hmm. And hoping that a resolution comes out of this, uh, but they're they're not getting you know they're not getting what they want, and people are seeing right. that this is going to go for a while. Yeah, that's that's a good possibility. Yeah, and for some things to look forward to that we'll be covering later on. Obviously, we'll be covering Flash, the new movie Flash, when it comes out, whether it be bad or good. So look <laughs> forward to hearing that when that comes out. At that point from what everybody's saying it is just an excellent so here's i mean talking about news that we were talking you know as we're talking about so flash is trending to be uh good um you have a lot of people that have watched it already and said my god probably one of the best comic book movies ever done so we'll see if that's true and then we'll see how the audience actually feels about that but all right that's actually pretty good Mm -hmm. indiana jones five oops my God, those reviews. So some reviews have been good. Some reviews have been really, really bad. Yeah. On yeah. that. So that's that. That's kind of sucks that if this movie is as bad as, you know, Crystal Skull, um, the fact that it went out like that is disappointing. It is disappointing. But there'll be contenders in June for what's the best movie anyway, because you got Flash. You got uh, Spider Man into was it into the Spider Verse? Into the Spider Verse, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll be Spider-verse. covering that as well. So we're doing Flash into the Spider Verse from June. By that time, Secret Invasion will be in. Yep. Like I said to you guys, uh, you panelers that are out there listening, I'm trying to get on schedule. So as every episode comes out every week, we'll be doing an episode a week, whether it be me, Frank, Steve, Rob. Or even another guest person that I could that wants to be on with us. Uh, that way, I could edit it and get it out to you and review it and have fun. Right. Uh, but we are doing that. We're going to try to get back to basics, back to where we were before, where uh, 
we had a lot of content. I remember there was a time when I did, I was doing two Marvel shows at the same time in one week. So I'd be putting out two episodes a week. And on top of that, Steve and Daphne were doing Snowpiercer. Wow. <laughs> so, and that was before <laughs> I was doing Adrenaline Cinema. So I'm trying to get back into that phase, ladies and gentlemen. Plus, as always, you could always just drop us a line and let us know what movie you want us to cover that we have not covered. Would you like us to cover anything from Wesley Snipes' The Blade series? Would you like us to cover that Howard the Duck movie we not talk about? As we, I yeah. mentioned last week, that kind of got <laughs> Frank all happy and laughing. Yes, we did. Condor Man. But Condor we could, Man? Yeah, well, we did cover that. Condor I Man. actually coaxed Alex in that, and Alex was just like, why did I do that? Because you wanted to be on a podcast, pal. <laughs> So uh, there's you also, asked for it. Yeah, no, no, no. I just needed somebody to do it with me. And he was like, I'll do it. He didn't even watch the movie. He didn't even knew the movie existed. Then he watched it and he oh goes, goodness. why did I watch this movie? <laughs> that's what my, hey, podcast, that's Boom, what my podcast is all about. It is about watching bad movies and saying, why are we watching this movie? <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys have any I, any thoughts of what we could cover, let us know. And that's where we're going to move right into submitting your feedback. So as you all know, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that has us on. You can find us. All you have to do is search for it. If ratings or reviews are out there, please do so with those apps of choice. The preferable one would be Apple Podcasts, because apparently that gets you mo mostly noticed. Uh, you could check out our website, panels to pixels and then our Facebook group, which is the best way and probably the easiest way to get in touch with us, because I like to put pictures of what we're going to be covering. So I wasn't preemptive with this because I've been out. I hurt myself, injured myself at work. I've been laid up for about, geez three and a half weeks or so at least i'm feeling a little bit better got an mri done today thankfully but i was also behind in editing that's why ant-man and the wasp didn't get out until last night and they then, still haven't given you any drugs uh, i'm good with the ibuprofen so i'm good oh, okay but, there you go but the uh we got uh with adrenaline cinema i'm actually editing john wick chapter four which just came out on digital so so if you watch the movie on digital because you didn't go see it in the theater, guess what? You have a podcast that you can listen to that just came out. It will be out this week. Actually, it'll be out tomorrow because that's my day of work tomorrow. Along with a <laughs> few other things that I'm going to be doing. You could go to our Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh, we are on Twitter. Sometimes I like to put this out there. I try to put it in Steve's hands for Instagram and Twitter, but unfortunately, I, I got to get the logins and uh hopefully i could just do this in one shot do facebook do that and that way you guys are out there so at panels two pixels so at panels the number two and pixels for twitter and you can find us on youtube all you have to do is search for panels the pixels podcast in the search bar you'll find us just subscribe and then uh get, ring that notification bell for when it's on literally it's the podcast but with an image of what we're covering with the panels to pixels logo on it. Hopefully they don't slack me for copyright because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> they like doing that. But uh, yeah, you could do that. It's the podcast and you can listen to it through your TV or however you want to play it. Some people do it through their phone and then stream it onto another device or Bluetooth. So you could do that. And uh, like I said, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and uh, the Instagram well, that's at panels to pixels podcast spelled out exactly as it is. So, like I said, just go to that. And the best thing you could do is word of mouth, tell a friend, and that helps us get more listeners as well. So, uh, that's it for, for me, what I have to push for this podcast. So, <laughs> fellas, where can other all these listeners hear you? Uh, so I am on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. The podcast that pretty much criticizes those big budget tentpole movies that didn't make it in the box office or critically. And we kind of analyze it and give it our own spin, see if we can make it any better. 
And of course, uh, we replace either the cast or director or whatever it is to, just to make that better. And that's how we do our, you know, our pick. We have a lot of fun and, so, and we also do a draft pick also with that. I just want to take a moment. I don't know if uh, you guys are aware, but um, Ray Stevenson passed away. I was going to say that. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, you know, we didn't cover that. And I just wanted to, you know, give out a big shout out to him. I mean, he's. Yeah, and the, Phenom- he's supposed phenomenal to be in the Ahsoka, actor. Ahsoka yeah. series. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be in the Ahsoka, Ahsoka yeah. series. He was the Punisher. Yes, he was. <laughs> yep. You know, in so uh, yeah, and but he's a great actor. He was also, in, of course, in the MCU mm-hmm. as Volstagg. I think it's Volstagg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For Ragnarok. Yeah, um, but you know, great Not Ragnarok. Yeah, great Dark actor. He's actually, in the war, yeah, he's, he's uh, actually in all in all, all the uh, yeah in all the Thor movies. Oh, he was okay. Yes, he's actually yeah, yeah he's Volstagg in all the uh, but you know great actor and he passed away. I, they still one of I don't my think favorite they, shows ever. Ro- Rome, Rome, Rome was Rome? Oh, wow. freaking great. Yeah. yeah, did they have they said what he passed away of yet, or they haven't? They put that did out yet? not. Probably too soon because it's been only a day or two, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I just want to get yesterday. Yeah, I just wanted to give a big shout out to him. I mean, it's uh, yeah. he'll be definitely missed. But yeah, so that's where you can listen to uh, to to me, and that's where pretty much I'm at. Or you could hear me here on Pencil Pixels, or if not, Adrenaline Cinemas, where sometimes I come on that too. So yeah. it all depends, you know. So and... I was going to bring the room down because I have nothing, but uh... no, <laughs> <laughs> you're here. Like you can hear me here in Pencil Pixels, or on fantasy movie picks, uh, I'm there as picks, well. Fantasy picks movie edition, not fantasy movie picks. <laughs> Look, uh, get it right, okay? And, and not that other one, fantasy movie dicks. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. that. <laughs> that's that's a whole thing with that's you. That's a whole man. different porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, completely different website. Yeah, or if not, you could just see him under the bridge in, Ma- in Miami or something like that. He has a sign. <laughs> <laughs> And well, podcasts for for podcasts podcast. for <laughs> change, <laughs> some change for podcast. Oh uh, man! All right, yeah, but... awesome. <laughs> That's okay. where you can hear them, fellas. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, with that, that was our podcast. I am Mark. I'm Frank, and I am Groot. No, I'm Rob. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we are group. <laughs> I'm Rob. Uh, yep, that's Rob. So same podcast, different pixel, different panel. And this was Panels to Pixels. We'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.